<laughs> okay, we are with the Wild Man, co-hosting again, and Hi. Michael. Hi. Michael's been arrested almost 50 times. His most serious offence involved a weapon, and we're going to get to that. During your incarceration, you were telling me a story just before this about a guy who got his head cut open. Yeah, I was, yeah. Well, basically, um, yeah, I was uh, I was on the wing. I was serving a sentence. I can't remember what sentence it was on, to be honest. Um, uh, but, but yeah, I was, uh, I was in Onley Prison and uh, this guy's come onto the wing and uh, one of the lads had recognised him from the previous prison or something. And uh, there must have been a situation in the other jail or the, the lad didn't like him or something like that. But he'd said to one of the bigger guys on the wing, one of the nutters, that was in for something serious. He said that this guy was a snitch, and uh, and uh, yeah, well, he 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 got himself cut open. That guy did. The the guy guy said the guy who was said to be a snitch got himself cut open, and they cut him like, and it cut straight down through his ear and straight down the side of his face. He was standing there when I saw him. He was standing there like that against the edge of the landing, leaning on the edge of the wing, like, and I've approached him and said like what's the matter mate like how bad how bad is it and as he's let go I could see his racks of teeth and his eardrum and it just <laughs> I've like pushed his hand back up onto his face and I said to him I said look I said do you need to get yourself down to healthcare? you need to go and see the officers you need to get some sort of help going on here mate you can't just go back in your cell you'll bleed to death yeah. he's like I-, I can't I can't they'll think I'm a they'll think I'm a snitch I was like well Newsflash, mate. I think they already think you're a snitch. You've already got yourself a, a, a scar down the side of your face yes. there, mate. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just not a good situation in there. It's not a safe place to be, is it? Was there any paperwork on him? I don't believe that there was. That was just an idle comment from another inmate. And it, it, that is literally how dangerous it is in there. You just have to have a wrong word said about you. And then because there's the gang mentality in there, isn't there? It's like... You get so many people that will be working together, like the ones that are trying to run the prison or whatever. And it's just mindless. It's just mindless. You also said a story about a black guy and a white guy that had an altercation. Yeah, there was a there was a little fella. Um, I was in Wood Hill Prison. That, that, that's a double A cat. That is. It's quite it houses some pretty dangerous people in there. And uh, and yeah, there was a simple argument about a space in the dinner queue at the canteen. And um, and then anyway, it was like a bit of back and forth and the little guys, like, basically, they had a little bit of a verbal altercation and then they, it was tea time, so everybody was locked up. And then the next morning, they they must have been shouting out of their windows at each other overnight or whatever, winding the situation up more. And the big fella's gone down to the little fella's cell to, like, obviously have it out with him. And the little fella must have had a boiled kettle of water and sugar and whatever he could else he could put in there, cooking oil or whatever, and he's dashed it over this big fella. Wow. And I've never heard a scream like it before in my life, to be honest with you, lads. It was it was horrible. It's horrifying, that. Proper blood-curdling. Like, it's something you can't unsee. And then I saw him taking his string vest off, and as he pulled his string vest off, like, part of his skin of his chest and part of his nipples come away with his top. Like, you know, that must be like molten lava having that thrown yeah. at you, mustn't it? Like, you know, boiled up in a kettle. And we've already with... got a string vest on, too. Yeah, right? exactly. It can't really be that great, can no. it? Like, I mean, even stuck. if you had a T-shirt and a shirt on, you had some protection, you're still going to yeah. scold the fuck out. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? It's still going to melt your face. And yeah. obviously he had he had a big beard and everything, and it like melted his beard to his face, and like his face and his lips and everything was all burnt. And obviously, where he's a black fella, that's gonna that's go gonna white. that's gonna go all pink and white, and that's gonna maybe that, that would have scarred him for the rest of his life, no yeah. doubt, no doubt at all. Like I don't think there's any way of fixing that sort of scarring on your face, is there? But yeah, he got mullered. I never saw either of those again. They would have both been dispersed off to the block or moved out of the prison or whatever. But it's a street charge that more than lately. Yeah, yeah, it's just mad. That'd yeah, they'd probably solar. take that an outside outside yeah. adjudicator, won't they? Definitely, because it's section eighteen. That. Yeah, yeah, it's wounding with intent, isn't it? Is it? You can't throw throw a kettle of boiling molten sugar no. at somebody and and not want to hurt them, can you? It's one of your worst nightmares, Dad, isn't it? You, yeah, you, that's it. You don't want to drink. Think about it. Isn't it? No, you don't. You don't want to see that. No. 
Because nah. you'd be paranoid to fuck on your bunk with oh, you know mate, what I mean? oh, mate, sitting in there after seeing that geezer get his face cut open uh, and seeing that, I'm on my I'm on my bunk, like as you said, I'm on my bunk and all sorts of stuff goes through your head. Yeah. Because you've got nothing but time to think in there, really, have you? Do you know I what used I mean? to sleep with my head there and the, the, the door there. But after a couple of months, I'd turn around and sleep so I could yeah, see so the door. Yeah, you can see what's see coming. coming in. Yeah. Yeah, you want your head to be the furthest away from it's the door. It's weird how you get to think, though, isn't it? It's yeah. weird how you get that in instincts. Yeah, it's, it is quite crazy because it instills those instincts on you, doesn't it? Because you've seen all of these people getting messed up for stupid yeah. stuff. Like, I saw people getting beat up with tuna tins in, in socks because they didn't pay back a half ounce, a £4.50 packet of tobacco. Jeez, Do you know what I mean? Mate. On the street side, amongst friends, a packet of tobacco, you'd just be like, oh, don't worry about it, mate. Yeah, it's a packet yeah. of tobacco. But in there, it's that serious. Well, it's, it's currency, isn't it? It's currency, yeah. And it's yeah. not the fact that what it is, it's the fact that I haven't got it's paid It's the principle. Back. And if other people see that, they'll think you're an easy mug, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. And then everybody else will try doing it, type yeah. thing. So then to, to prove yourself. But I don't see how it's proving yourself. It's just mad. It's a mad situation, isn't it? It's like, but what, what can you... What, Potentially what can risking you your life and getting in fights and getting stabbed... Over a bit of backy, it's just it's really not, not the worth one, is it? it? No, it's, it's not, not the one. one. Imagine that you if pick you, your fights, don't you? you know imagine I mean? if you That's lost your eye, if you lost your eye over not paying back somebody a quarter of tobacco yeah. or something. It's not, it's not really ideal, is it? It's not. So like, what what year is this is this in your story? In what prison, roughly? Um, which what what sorry? Repeat those, those those violent stories you started with. Approximately what year were they, and what prisons um, were they, did they happen at? Um, well, the the boiling the boiling water happened. The boiling water and sugar that happened in Woodhill Prison. Uh, as I said, that's a double A cat. Like that's had people in there, like Huntley and Bronson and uh, and, and people like that. It houses. Did, did you ever people. Did you ever see any of them? No, I never okay. saw any of them. Obviously, they would have been like, too young we, for that. Yeah, yeah. Like I was in, I was in basically, I was in the bit that went up to a B cat or went up to an A cat, not the double A cat, because the double A cat prison is basically a prison within, within a, a prison. prison. Yeah. So like they're fenced off. So like we we had our prison where we'd had our walkways and that, and then there was another wall within our wall where they was all housed, and they done movements at completely separate times and like, do you know what I mean? It's just a. So what what year were you there? Um. Well, I thought uh, in Woodhill, I think that would have been about two thousand and fourteen, fifteen, maybe. So it's quite recent then. Yeah. And yeah. why why were you considered so dangerous that you were in supermax then like that? Oh, because I was in for a firearms offence. And what led to the firearms offence? Ah, oh, well, basically, what it was was um, we was all like we was all drug dealers and that in my crew of friends. We was all selling a bit of ketamine and a bit of whatever, and and like basically, um, one of my friends uh, we'd all chipped in a bit of money together, like to, collectively to go and get something, uh, and my mate had sent his brother to go and get it to go and pick it up. He was yeah. only a young lad, about 18, 19, 20, something like that. And uh, basically, they've gave him a tester of the ketamine. And ketamine's a horse tranquilizer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it, it, it's like, it, it, it's, a bad, it, it's a bad thing to do. You wouldn't really generally take a massive line of ketamine if you was going to plan to do anything for the next couple of hours. No, you'd and obviously, the house, wouldn't you? Obviously, that's what, that's what he's done. He's obviously had a line of K, and the guys that were dealing with him have obviously spotted that he's a kid wet yeah. behind the ears, and he had 12 and a half, but I think it's 12 and a half grand or something like that, or, or 14 grand or something. Jack, do you know what I mean? And he's gone, yeah, yeah, wait there, lad. Wait there, I'm just going to go in this block of flats and grab it. And he's obviously gone in the front of the block of flats, up the stairs and out the fire escape. <laughs> Over mm. 10 grand richer. So he'd done a good move there, really, didn't he? But obviously, but then all of us lot, thinking, oh, we've been robbed. The lads that set the deal up, we've gone to them. Yeah. Uh, and I've, I, was in, I was in Banbury in my town at this time, and I've jumped in a car and gone up there. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a shotgun involved. And... Uh, and basically, these lads are all in the flat, and we're trying to work out where this lad is that's run away with the money. Basically, basically, that was all, that was the sum of it. We just wanted our money back. 
just were we shouldn't have been in the game in the first place, understandably, yeah. But we just wanted our money back. It weren't like we thought about it. Oh yeah, we're gonna go there. We're gonna. We, we didn't like intend like for anything to happen specifically. We didn't premeditate anything like that. It was all spur of the moment, chasing our money down, and. Um, and we've gone there, we're there in the flat overnight and we're saying to these lads, like, sort it out, lads, like, we, we need our money back. Like, you've set a deal up, you, you're all young lads, you've got yourselves into a man's game and, uh, and and you're obviously well out of your depth. Yeah. You need to sort it out, boys, because these lads don't mess around, like, do you know what I mean? And and obviously there was a pump-action shotgun in the premises and, um, and uh, well... We, we, we're there anyway, and uh, we, this one lad, he'd, uh, he said, oh, yeah, I can get some money off of my boss. I can get I can get an advance on my wages for my part in it. I'll get an advance on my wages, and you can have this. Took his gold bracelet off and gave it us. It was quite a thick bracelet. It could have been worth about 500 quid scrap weight or something. Uh, but obviously, we took that because it was, it was for the money we had missing. And, uh, and yeah, uh, we've got... We, and then we we've set this up with this kid and he's gone his boss has arranged to meet him uh and we didn't think nothing of it obviously because we was all off our heads do you know what i mean <laughs> all druggies sniffing k drinking vodka just wait for him to get out the house do you know what i mean it? just 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 yeah just waiting just to pass time like yeah. do you know what i mean until we until we go down to collect the money and i've gone down there with him i left my friend in the car and i've gone to this costa coffee with him I'm sitting there in Costa Coffee and this guy's come and sat down on the table with us. I'm sipping at my drink and this guy's going, well, I can't believe that you're trying to get this money out of me, blackmailing me and all of this lot. No, oh, hold on a minute. I won't blackmailing you, mate. If this is your employee. He's asked you for an advance on his wages. I've gave him a lift here, mate. I'm nothing to do with what he's asking you. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, I weren't going to... I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, well, I've had him in a flat for the last 24 hours. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're not exactly going to be saying that. But then all of a sudden, this guy, I could see that he was sweating. Yeah. Yeah, so he was paranoid about being in the situation. And then he starts scratching at the side of his face like that. And as soon as I've noticed that he's scratching at the side of his face, that must have been his sign to them to make their move. Because as soon as I looked up from that, there's armed police coming from every corner crop, like, a police, a riot van pulled up, loads of them spilled out of the riot van. I think it said in the read-up, I think it said there was 40 officers. Wow. Yeah? I think it said there was 40 officers involved in this sting. Yeah, so... So that was quite serious. And obviously they was armed because they'd been made... They'd been led to understand by him that his life was in danger. That his and there man, was a gun. His, his boss, and they knew that there was a gun involved. So, so then it was just... It was a big old downhill slope from there, mate. Like... Uh, it, it it wasn't it was never supposed to go down like that we're supposed to go and get our money back but it just happened like that and uh, out of everybody there I went no comment didn't say nothing didn't say nothing didn't didn't say absolutely anything in my interviews but then later realised that about four or five of my friends were singing like canaries telling them rubbish stories yeah um because I'd kept my mouth shut, it made me look like the guilty one. And I had the keys in my pocket to the car that the gun had been put in. So, like, basically, because I had the keys to the locked toes. car, it was on my toes. Yeah. It was on my toes. And I knew straight away it was a sawn-off pump action shotgun fully loaded. That's not a baby sentence. That was a five-year sentence within itself, minimum sentence. Hence why I got remanded instantly. And, uh, yeah, went for trial. Well, like, just kept my mouth shut and said I'm not guilty. Like, there's no fingerprints of mine on the gun. Never touched or DNA, no DNA or nothing on the gun. There was three other people's DNA on the bag and on the wrapping and fingerprints and stuff. They all got away scot-free with it. I got I copped a five-year sentence. You're quite fortunate, really, though, because that's minimum, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, sort of... yeah. I mean, like, he, the judge said at the time, he was like, oh, it's five years for that and five years for the bullets. And then, obviously, he gave me a little couple of other sentences for the driving offences and stuff like that. And I'm adding it up as he's saying it, five years and five years, and I'm like... I've got no fingers left. Yeah. Like, and I'm still counting the other 18 months on top of it. And then, in the end, he was like... However, it seemed like he take he took about five minutes to say however, yeah? And uh, he goes, however, it's perfectly within my rights to run those sentences concurrently. Yeah. So I got 
I just got the five, which was quite fortunate, yeah. But still a long time though, wasn't it? I had a six month baby at the time and a three year old. And uh, yeah, well, obviously it weren't very good for them, was it? It was no. like, it, 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 it kind of like, it ruined my life, really. Ruined my life because I like went into jail. Obviously, got had little or minimum contact with my kids and my family because it was too far for them to come and visit Winchester Prison all the way up there, and then, um, and then yeah, and then basically, well, and then I've gone into the prison prison system, and uh, obviously I'm depressed, I'm worried, I'm I'm upset, I, I'm distraught. I don't know what, I don't know where I'm going to end up. Don't know what's going to happen with me. It's like, it's like, yeah, when you think about it, it's just none of the whole situation, none of it was worth it. None of it, absolutely none of it. Did you make alliances with people in prison then? Um, well, yeah, obviously, you've got to get yourselves in with the right people while you're in prison, because if you're not in with the right people, and then you're, then you're in with the wrong people, and if you're in with the wrong people, you're getting yourself beat up, you're getting yourself bullied, you're getting yourself... It's just not a nice place to be. And then obviously through all of that, I then found I then found heroin. So you found heroin in prison? In prison. And how was that introduced to you? Basically, there was a couple of lads who were selling it on the wing. And uh, yeah, obviously I thought, well, I had a bit of canteen and that because I was still getting money sent in. Because I, uh, I left my business that I had with my baby mother. Like, do you know what I mean? Uh, when I went to jail and just, yeah, just left all of my money and everything with her. Left it with her to do with as she pleased. Um, but then, like, but then obviously I've, I've found heroin and I realised that when you do it, it takes away all of your cares and all of that. Just run us through the first time you did it, how you got it and what it well, felt the like. Well, the first time I got it, yeah, I, I basically, I had a load of, it was canteen day, yeah, and I had a load of toiletries and a load of, like, food and munches, and that's currency in there. In a yeah. place like prison, as you know yourself, it's currency, yeah? I had tobacco and everything. And I've seen these lads in there, they're, like, selling it, and I've seen, I've seen one of the lads that's bought it off of them, but I'm sitting in his cell and he's having a boot and he's toking, he's toking it, and I could just see him... It just seemed to like he's gone from being really stressed and angry and like really like really annoyed to being completely chilled out, laughing his head off like he didn't have a care in the world. I was like, you know what? In my current situation, I could really do with some of that. Take away your inhibitions. Yes, exactly. Take away all my troubles. Take away my inhibitions. And then I've done it. I've gone to the geezer and I've swapped him. I think it was like about a tenner's worth of or maybe 15 quid's worth of canteen, packet of tobacco and a load of sweets and a load of, like, a packet of cornflakes or something, I can't even remember specifically. But it was a 15 quid's worth of canteen. I've just gone and swapped it with him, done a deal with him straight away. Took it back to my cell. I didn't have a clue what I was fucking doing with it. I didn't have, yeah. a, didn't have an absolute clue what I was doing with it. I just had this little, little tiny thing wrapped in the palm of my hand. I had was no it powder idea. or tar? It was powder. Yeah, all right. It was like 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 a rock and it it was brown powder and it was in a little paper wrap. And I'm like, well what do I do with it now? Like and I have like I've gone back to the geezer who whose cell I was in who was doing it and I've said to him, I said, you got any like materials? I've never done this before, mate. And like obviously I had to share it with him. Yeah. But because it was the first time that I'd done heroin it was, it was strong. It was real strong. I, I, I like, he got, he got out of yogurt out of his cupboard and he like the, peeled the foil top off of the yogurt pot and he like burnt the plastic off of the tin foil. So it was just tin foil that was left. And then he's like, he's like banged it on the tin foil and he's put a lighter underneath it and I used a pen tube to suck the vapor yeah. up with. And it was like, it was just, it was just like within three minutes, it was like all of my troubles were gone. It was like, I didn't have a care in the world. I didn't, I wasn't worried about anything. I was laid back on my bunk. I was just enjoying it. After I'd done it, I'd gone back straight back to myself, got myself in my bed, like just laid there. And then I just carried on like nodding. Like that's all I can explain it as, I just carried on nodding. But that feeling when I was nodding, it was like, it was like it was like a warm blanket around me. I'm not 
I'm not trying to like glorify it for anybody, yeah, but it took away all of my cares. And that's not a good thing. That's no. really, really not a good thing. Did you puke up the first time you did And it? I was, that, that's, I was getting there. And yeah. then the next thing, I'm laid on my bed and the room starts moving about. Every time I moved my head, it was like, it was like, I don't know, it was like, it was like my neck had gone to jelly. I'd move my head that way and I'd have to bounce it back that way to like level it out. Yeah. I'm like watching the TV, watching the TV and it's like, it's, I'm just like, can't focus properly. It's just like drifting off. Every time you close your eyes, you drift off into a different universe. And then all of a sudden I started feeling sick and it was like somebody had turned a tap on above my head. I started sweating buckets, absolutely yeah. sweating buckets. I thought, well, what's going on here? I thought I was going to die or something. I rushed to the toilet, threw up. But as I threw up, it didn't make me feel bad no. when I threw up. It made me feel good to throw up. It was, it, it, it's just completely wrong. It's like, yeah, it's just a wrong situation, wasn't it? It's like, yeah, it's not nice at all. But then, obviously, you get you you get addicted to that disassociation, don't you? You say your high gets better once you threw up for some reason. I don't know why, what that, that's about, like... I don't know, it's probably something to do with your blood pressure, isn't it? it yeah. When you strain to be sick, it makes your blood pressure go up, doesn't it? But but yeah, it's not it's not a good look. It's not really not a good thing to do. But yeah, obviously from that, I've realised that heroin w was about to be my new best friend. So did you graduate to shooting it up? Yeah, yeah, and then obviously how, how long did that take before you smoked it? I was in I was in jail and I was smoking it, smoking it, smoking it, and then I've got out of jail. And then I'm out on license, and I've I've scored some on the street. But then he's 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 selling he's selling white and dark. So I thought, well, I'll give the white and the dark a go. Like, and I've tried the white, and the white's buzzed me up. And then I smoked the dark and levelled off with that. And it was like, it it, it they both like complemented each other type thing. So it's just like a so like when I've got out of jail, I was like twenty three stone twelve in weight. And in 13 months, well, 13 and a half months, I'd gone down from 23 stone 12 to just over 13 stone. And you're what, six and a half foot? I'm six foot six tall, yeah. Six foot six, wow. So so it's pretty pretty savage, to be honest with you. Like, it's, it is a really wrong choice to make. And I beg anybody out there to not make them decisions. There how, is many points that you can go to before. How long point. did you serve on that sentence then? Well, I got out and then um, I was behaving on my licence conditions and I think I'd done well for about 12 months. And then I messed up. I messed up. I missed appointments. And I got a little six-week recall. It was my first recall, I think. Just as a wake-up? Yeah, just as like slap in the face type thing from yeah. the system. Say so, like, yeah, sort your life out. If not, we're going to lock you up again. I've got out after that six weeks and they've put me into a hostel. And the hostel that I was in was had sex offenders in the hostel. Shit. Yeah? So, me being a straight-laced person, like, well, I say straight-laced, I'm an ex-con, obviously, but, but you don't associate yourself with people like that in society or in jail or anywhere. And... Uh, Smash on site, isn't it? Yeah, literally. Literally. And obviously... Uh, and then I, I, was give, I, was, I was giving them the sly digs as I was walking past, like you, Dave. Or or you 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 wrong and as I was walking past or I'd barge them in the stairwell and then eventually one of them must have grasped me up for doing that and then I got and then I just got off I, I got a standard recall then that was that was standard recall for for basically I wasn't compliant for non-compliance and then they they recalled me and I ended up serving just I think it was either just under or just over four years of that five year sentence just under four years I think it was and were you on drugs the whole time. So, what about like family support and stuff like that? Our girlfriend or anything contacting you and trying to like? Well, no. Well, I like, obviously, obviously, my um, the mother and my kids didn't want to be part of my life at that point. So. Yeah, it's understandable. So yeah. it's like, yeah. Well, I wouldn't have wanted to be part of my life. To be fair. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to be part of my life, <laughs> hence why I become an addict. That's why you were doing it, wasn't it, to yeah, escape yourself? exactly, just doing it to escape myself. And all I was doing was destroying myself, not escaping yeah. myself. And it took for pretty much all of my family to disown me uh, mm. and for pretty much everyone apart from my mum. My mum was the only one that stuck by my side solid. 
Piss you can't learn that lesson on the first day, innit? Exactly, mm. exactly. You know I mean? yeah. Piss exactly. you that long to learn that lesson. Exactly, yeah, that's not, it's, it's just not right, is it? It's not. It's like, if, if I could have learnt that, but if I knew then what I know now, would I ever make the decision to sell drugs? No. Would I have gone and got a job in McDonald's and been that spotty kid serving burgers? Yes. Do you think smart kids have a bad name? I mean, they do in my town because the thieves, you know what I mean? They go yeah. around house burglars. Yeah, they do have quite a bad they do have quite a bad press, but but like we, we had a little conversation earlier on, didn't we? But you can you can have a you can have a functioning yeah, yeah, addict. a working addict. A working addict, yeah, that uh, that does just enough to get by. Well, but they're just, just but enough still, to stay healthy, don't they? Exactly, exactly. They don't even they're get high on what they do. No, exactly. They just do it to make themselves They better. do it to make themselves well. Yeah. Yeah, they don't, get, they don't do it to get a buzz. They no. literally do it to stop the sickness and the rattle. Because that takes forever to get over, that does. Like, that's something, even though I've been clean for... Like at least sixteen months, eighteen months now, I've been clean, providing consistently clean drug tests uh, with my detox unit. Um, like it, it takes, it just takes a long time to get over it. It just takes a hell of a long time to get over it. So during this four years, then what else did you do with your time inside? Um, well, in my time inside, I got myself my city and guilds. Um, Motor Mechanics, level two. There was a little Scottish fella called Alex in uh, in Onley Prison that was that got me through that. I was really good. It's really positive. I was already into engines and mechanics and stuff, motorbikes and that anyway. So so like so so it kind of like fitted at the time. And then I done a few entry level courses like entry level bricklaying, entry level health and safety. And stuff like that, and then uh, and then I went on to do plumbing, and I got my plumbing city and guilds, level two city and guilds plumbing, so I can fit like rainwater goods and um, like radiators and toilets and sinks and stuff like that. I've got the ticket to do that, and then I done my carpentry. It was site carpentry and bench joinery. I'd done, and I'd done that up to a level two as well. So basically, out of that time in jail, I'd, I wasn't just a messed up addict, I did actually do some positive things with my life while I was there. Yeah, you actually got so, something out so of it. So I actually got something out of it, but not everybody gets out of it, do they? It's well, not everyone wants it. to, though. Yeah. A lot of them will just want to sit on the fucking ass. Yeah. And as long as they've got fucking rich mummy and daddy sending them money, they don't give a flying fuck. No, they don't care, no. do they? No, it's not. No, that's what, but, that, but when you disassociate yourself or, or on a drug that, that smashes you off the planet like that, you can't really keep control of your everything, can you? Not no. properly, because... Yeah, it's just... It's what I'm not situation. familiar with. I've done every drug under the planet, but heroin's not one that's... I've just... I've had, had friends that die on it, and it's just one of them things that's it's just, it's just taboo to me. But that could be judgmental of me. Because I can't really blame the drug because they're old enough to know better. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, of course, of course. Did you get assigned a job in prison? Yeah, I had a few different jobs in prison. In Onley Prison, I had um, I had a job as uh, I was the works orderly in in Onley Prison, and uh, basically what we had done is like when you had had a kid smash up his cell or break his bed or there was a broken sink or something like that, I'd go around with a work skeezer and fix it. So, uh, yeah, I was doing that for a little while in there. I was a cleaner also for a little while. Any dirty process you had to clean or anything like that? Oh, mate, yeah. There was this one guy like that was in the block and like he'd literally painted 90% of his cell with his own shit. God. Uh, and I don't know how he was even sat in there, like, you know, and obviously... Oh yeah, I got that. That was another thing that I got from prison as well. My British Institute of Cleaning Science. It's called a BIC certificate, and it qualifies you to clean up like bodily fluids and contaminated sharps and stuff like that, which is quite a useful thing to have. Lot like, on the outside, it is good. It is a good certificate. It to is have. if you've got to go an industrial cleaner or something. Yeah, that's what I've got. That's a, yeah, I've yeah. got the industrial cleaning qualification. I've got. So yeah, that helps me quite. That does help me quite a bit. That certificate, to be fair. So why did he smear this cell with shit? Because he didn't get what he wanted. What was it he wanted? 
I don't know, it's probably tobacco or something like that. You get loads of idiots like that, don't you? You get the ones that can't handle their bird. Attention the, seeking. The ones that can't handle their jail time and they know the more they kick off, the more attention they get. So it means that they're not left sat in their cell for 24 hours. They've got a screw sitting, out, sitting outside their door taking notes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So they've got somebody to talk to. So really, when you think about it, it's more, as you said, it's an attention cry, isn't it's it? It's either that or... They're scared. Do you, you want to get off the wing and they're yeah, scared? Yeah, they're scared and they you owe want to somebody... Go down the block. They owe somebody money and, and they, they don't, don't want, want to pay it. up, so they're, they're, they're playing up. Yeah, they don't want to fight it out. Yeah. So what, what's the mechanics then of going in and cleaning that up? You'd have to get your uh, white suit on. Like, you know, your crime scene investigation <laughs> suit. Like, your suit of right up. You tie, you tie, you like, make sure that everything's as tight as it can be so you've only got your nose... Like has your, racks, yeah. yeah, Yeah, so you've only got your face and your, no, your eyes and your nose sticking out and then you stick the face mask on, the respirator. You've got to be covered. You've got to have everything 100% covered. You, you've got to have boots on that cover your shoes. You've got to have everything because obviously you don't know what he's got, do you? You don't, If he's cut himself or whatever, or if he's... He, you don't know what diseases he's got and you can't go in there and uh, and... Uh, expose yourself to them no. diseases. Does that cover asbestos too? What the? Uh, could you remove asbestos? I probably could, to be fair. Yeah. Because you need like you need you do. Yeah, because it's a yeah, because it's a it's a it's a biohazard. It's a hazardous yeah. material, isn't yeah. it? So I've been taught how to deal with hazardous materials like infected syringes and uh, you get up to and thirty blood, pounds an hour moving asbestos. Blood. Yeah, I know it's good. It is good. I just uh, I, I had a job the other week. Um, a lady, and I've done the research on it, and um, I basically reclad the front of her garage. It was quite good. I like uh, and uh, reclad over the top of it. It was a pretty good situation. I, she gave me a she gave me a car and like three hundred quid to do it or something like that. It was quite good. But obviously now now I've tidied myself up and and tried tried to sort my life out. I've set up like a little like a little handyman thing that I'm trying to get off the ground. Like yeah, just. Like a white van man. I had, yeah, I had to make the decision to become like to try and set up my own business because of my criminal record. Nobody yeah. would look at me. True that. Yeah. McDonald's won't even employ me because of my criminal record. Like how bad that 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 made me feel like that made me feel like this big. Like that made me feel tiny. McDonald's refused to employ me because of my criminal record. None of them girls in McDonald's eat McDonald's anyway. They're skinny. They're fucking tiny. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They don't eat McDonald's. They don't know what a burger liars. is. And, uh, you can't trust somebody who don't eat their own food. No, you can't. Can, no. you, you can't. Never no. trust a skinny chef. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Never trust a skinny chef. It's been a while since I've heard that one. So when you go in that cell then with your hazmat suit on and your cleaning chemicals, how long can you tolerate that stink for? That shit smeared everywhere? About... About five minutes. You go in there and do five minutes worth and then come back out and stand outside. But, like, obviously, because you're the industrial cleaner on the wing, it doesn't matter because they'll just unlock you. Do you know what I mean? If the, if the screws need you and then they've got a key to your door, they can come and get you any time of the day that they want to to come out and clean a dirty protest up or... Or whatever, whatever. They they've got full control in there. You don't have to remember nothing in there. They remind you absolutely everything. The only thing you've got to remember is to go to the toilet and get your dinner. <laughs> well, literally anything else. They've all got it all on a timetable, uh, and it's rigid movements in there, isn't it? It's like you've not got no freedom at all. What was the craziest thing you had to clean up? Uh... Oh, the craziest thing. Not the craziest thing, but the most annoying thing, yeah, is somebody carried on leaving the fucking shower windows open or up on the freeze in uh, Winchester Prison. It's an old Victorian prison, and it didn't have no meshes on the shower windows. Mm. So when you left the windows open, the pigeons would fly in, mm. yeah? And what do pigeons do? They shit through shit, the eye of an eagle, don't they? Like, they're shitting everywhere. Yeah. They're flying, they're shitting. So, like, yeah, literally, that was the most annoying thing that I had to clean up. And that would probably happen at least once a week. And I'd have to go into the shower room and do a deep clean because pigeon shit's actually carcinogenic. It's actually not, not good for you at all. So, Full of acid, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's got a lot of real bad things in it. I don't, I can't tell you exactly what, but it's not good for you, whatever <sighs> happens. So, yeah, like that's the worst thing. And obviously, because it was up on the freeze, heat rises. 
Yeah, so when they had the heated tubes on, so you'd be upstairs in the shower with your hazmat suit on, scrubbing the showers out, sweating, sweating buckets. Like, you can't take your mask off. Like a fat man in a pie shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it just weren't good. It just really weren't good. Like, and that, that was at least once a week. But the good thing about it is, is you get paid £15 on top of your canteen for each deep clean you do, so... £15 for a deep clean, yeah. £15 is a deep... It, it, that is good, because then when you get your canteen sheet that week and you've done five deep cleans, you've got you've got £75 on your canteen sheet plus your £15 that comes out of your own money. Do you what know what I mean? Well, so you've got like a £90, £100 canteen sheet and it's like... What's your limit you spend? Like £15.50, that was the limit at first. But then like... But like if you had £90 in your spends, you could spend £90. Oh, right. So you had your private account, private yeah. PC and SP, spends and private cash. So, you know, so £15.50 would drop out of your private cash yeah. each week onto your canteen sheet. And then your wages would go onto your canteen sheet, sheet as well. Yeah. So like if I'd done like three or four deep cleans, as I said, that would be 60 quid in deep cleans plus 15 50 of my own money. That would be 75 quid I could spend on my canteen sheet that week. That's but, good. That, but you? obviously, because I was a because I was an addict, I yeah. would just spend. I would just blow all of that on getting whatever next man wanted for his shopping list to yeah. give me my drugs. So, so really, I didn't benefit nothing from it. it it's just yeah, it's just a mad situation. Go out and earn and earn and earn, and then spend it all on drugs, and it's just it's just a horrible cycle to get yourself into, and it's hard to get out of. Really, really hard to get out of. It's more than a gyro, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, damn straight. <laughs> it's more than a job. Did you see anyone self-harming or setting fire to themselves? Yes, I saw one kid set fire to his cell. I was upstairs on the freeze and he was upstairs. In the, There was like, my cell was here and his cell was here and there was a shower room in between, like a big square shower room. And he set fire to his cell with himself inside of it. I wasn't coming to let him out for a phone call or something. So he set fire to the back of his cell. I don't understand why somebody would do that. Why would you set fire to your own cell with yourself in it? I think he was expecting to get opened up. <laughs> uh, but they didn't. They, they they didn't open him up. And they waited for the Mufti squad, the tornado team with all the... But what they done is they put the fire hose through the... They've got like a hole in the cell door that's about so big. Yeah. And it's got like a plug that goes in the middle of it that they open with a special key. They take that plug out and they feed through a, a tube that's about so long and it's got loads of little tiny holes in it. it and what it does is it just sprays foam completely on the whole cell. So it, so it puts out whatever fire he's made, ruins all of his paperwork and letters, soaks all of his clothes, probably knackers his stereo... All for what? Just to get out of your cell and make a phone call? He could have waited for breakfast and made his... They use that same call. hole for, like, of tear gas as well. Yeah, yeah, to put the tear gas through. Yeah. If, you, if they put flashbangs through as well. Uh, that was a, that, There was a riot in Onley Prison when I was in there, and that went off pretty well. There was a riot? Yeah, it was a or riot. was that over conditions? Yeah, it was over crap conditions. So, do you want to take us through that? So, like, basically, what it was, was there was a... You get a shitload of nothing in there, yeah... You get nothing and loads of it. And basically, the lads were kicking off about not having enough time out of their cells. So, like, a few of them have come together and they've instigated the whole wing, refusing to lock up. That happened in two of the different jails that I was in, Bullingdon and in Onley. And uh, Onley, they got the proper tornado team in because they was all out on the yard, climbing up on the roof and everything. They was all over the shop. So they, they got the lads down off the roof and then they've like gone in and spun the wing, but they've just took a load of flashbang grenades in there with them. Yeah. And like literally, they've walked in and then all, all we've heard on the induction wing where I was working at the time, because I was like an orderly or whatever with the works, like... They've basically, all I heard was like, boo, 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 boo. like about 10 explosions. Like, and then after that, all you could hear is the, the inmates going, ah, ah, because they're getting beat the shit out of by the tornado team, really regretting their actions. But 
I suppose it got them an half hour, half hour longer out of their cell, <laughs> didn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's stupid, really, when you think about it. They smashed the pool table up, which was for them to play with. Do you know what I mean? They smashed the table tennis pl- table up, which was for them to play with. They snapped all of the pool cues, which was for them. Do you know what I mean? They didn't really damage anything to do with the screws or the prison. Well, they obviously, would... the pool table cost money. But yeah. now, they've changed the rules in there now. If you break something that belongs to the prison system, they charge you full ticket price on whatever you break and whatever it costs to get the plumber to come and fix it. Yeah, They bill them and it comes out of their private cash and their spends. Okay, well. So then it reduces them down to being able to spend only £3 a week for themselves. Yeah. Not enough for a packet of tobacco. Yeah, and then they take the deductions off until they've paid off whatever they've broken. Just a good idea, really, because you was getting lads in there who weren't getting their own way, and then they go straight back in their cell, get the door locked, they kick their toilet off, kick their sink off, and and, and just create... Spit the dummies out, in other words. Yeah, yeah, spit the dummies right out. Aim for that big, massive water main that's behind the sink that carries water all the way up and down the wing. Do you know what I mean? Rip that out of the wall and then cause a flood. Yeah. And then it was down to the industrial cleaners like myself to clean it up. It was just madness. How was your relations with the staff? Were the guards dicks to you or were they all right? Um, Well, I got moved from... uh, Well, I was in Bullingdon and there was this one screw that had a ponytail. Yeah, this one male screw that had a ponytail. Now, I'm quite a comic, yeah. I like to have a joke. I like to have a laugh, quite a upbeat person. And um, I used to call him Barbara. Because <laughs> yeah. he had because he had this ponytail and he never used to have a hair out of place, yeah? Like, yeah. Perfect ponytail, yeah? And it would look like it was straightened every day. So I called him Barbara. And he didn't like that. It was just a joke from my side, obviously. Nothing yeah, he defensive. Wasn't, You're yeah. like, Barbs, don't worry, Babs. Do you know what I mean? Winded him up a little bit. But he, um, but he managed to like get to the SO or something and they got me ghosted out up to Ramby, Retford, Nottinghamshire. And that was a nasty place. Like, obviously, because I was a southerner and they took me up north. Yeah. It was it was just a bit it was a bit like cliche, northerners don't like southerners, do they? And like it seemed like the screws up there just really didn't like me. It just seemed like they just really didn't get on with me. So did you get many disciplinary tickets then from the staff? Um well yeah, I had my fair share, yeah. I like Refusing to bang up a couple of times. Why did you? I never refuse? made it. I know. I don't think. I don't know whether I made it as far as the block. Did I make it? I don't know. That's what I mean. I tried. I tried. Obviously, tried my hardest to forget about prison. Yeah, but but it's like it's it. It's one of them things, isn't it? It's like that. It's bittersweet memories because it taught. It taught me. It did teach me right from wrong. Prison. It did do that. It did. And it taught me to keep my nut down and behave myself because it's not a place that you want to end up, really, is it? No. It's not like, I don't know, like, British prisons are pretty pretty soft. Like, I don't think that they do enough. I don't think they do enough these days to rehabilitate criminals. I think, like, because when I, once I'd served my sentence and I had no more licence left, it was just like, yeah, all right, then. Yeah. See you later. Thanks for your time. Like, there's no... There you wasn't. get Playstations over there, don't you? Oh, yeah. In prisons nowadays, they can have Playstations, Xboxes. And to be fair, there's that many mobile phones in prisons. Like, probably yeah. every single every single prison has probably got a mobile phone nowadays. Do you know what I mean? Like, How many people go in and come up with, out with a heroin addiction? Lots. A hell of a lot. A hell of a hell Why of a Why do you lot. think heroin's the drug of choice in prison? Because, yeah, if you think about it, yeah... It it's so little the amount of heroin that somebody needs to get a buzz is so minute and tiny. Like you think that's where the most money is for the criminals, isn't it? It's gotta be. It, that's that's where the money's at. It's and it's the smallest it? Yeah, it's inexpensive to buy on the outside, but over expensive on the inside to yeah. buy. Like for instance, what you would pay for a tenner for on the street side, for instance. You'd pay £100 for that in prison. £100? How much weight is that? Not point, not one of a gram. <sighs> Ten times. So the dealers are killing it. They're making a £1,000 off of a gram. But if you got a gram of coke, you'd, you'd be making even more, wouldn't you? Exactly, exactly. If you had a gram of coke in there, yeah, blimey. Did you watch that show Prison on Channel 4? 
No, I don't believe not. I did. I might they have showed, to, um, if you're saying it's good. They showed the dealers and they said they were making more selling to the prisoners, dealing to the prisoners, oh, yeah. than they were dealing before they got arrested. Yeah, no, exactly. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, in there, yeah, there is that many people. And you can spot who's doing the, doing the shit when you're on the wing... Yeah, because you'll be walking past people's cells and then there's the guy with all the fucking and then food there's the on guy, his Then there's the guy that's got absolutely thousands of tins of tuna and thousands yeah. of cartons of milk and thousands of this. You can tell blatantly they're doing what they're doing, but the screws can't do nothing about it until they catch him with something. Well, what it showed in this documentary prison on Channel 4, the screws knew who the head guy was. So they went in, they raided his cell... They found the dope, and I thought, all right, he's screwed now. He's going to get charges. He's going to get no. his time extended. And what no. he did was he had lower-level users go to the guards and say it was their dope and sign paperwork yeah. and take responsibility. Oh, hell yeah. And he was back dealing again the next day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is, that is how it works. It's just crazy. It is honestly crazy because cause in there, yeah, like, it's, an, if it's, it's not like a court situation. If you get caught with doing something, it's not like a law court situation, yeah? You'll get, you'll get a chance to go down in front of the governor and you'll have to say your bit. You'll have to say whether you're guilty or not guilty. But at the same time as that, you can take witnesses. You can take witnesses with you. But then you can get also, as you said yourself, I could get Joe Bloggs on the wing to say that it was his stuff in my cell and he's put it there and I never knew nothing about it. Give him half ounce of tobacco. He's happy because he's got no backy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's the, just one of those ones, isn't it? Unless you get caught with a law, they're not going to street charge you. Nah, exactly. And you'd have to get caught with a parcel of a half a kilo for them to give you a street charge. I've seen them go into a kid's cell before and bring out like half a carrier bag full of spice. And the kid was back on the wing within a week. How prevalent is spice in the UK prison system? It's deadly. It is everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. My mate, I spoke to my mate recently who's in uh, Bullenden Prison, and he said that even in Bullenden Prison now, they've stopped giving people their letters. They've stopped it. They don't give them their letters. They now get the letter, they photocopy the letter, mm -hmm. and they give it to the prisoner on their paper. Because yeah. this spice stuff is in a liquid and they were spraying the bloody letters, yeah? And then you've got people going around the wing selling bits of paper to people to smoke. It's madness. It's craziness, honestly. So, like, you, I, I even bought a, a spliff off of it of some, off of somebody on the wing before, yeah? And he's passed me this little bit of lined paper that was about that big by about that big. And he's gone, trust me, go careful with it. It's deadly. I'm looking at it, I'm thinking... You're taking the piss. Are yeah. you joking me or something, bruv? I thought he'd rip me off. Yeah. But I didn't. I ripped a little dear bit of it off and put it into my roll-up. Mashed me up. It was just crazy stuff. But, like, obviously, the more the more concentrated they can get it on the paper, you just don't know what dose you're getting. You no. just don't... So when you say mashed you up, how long did it take to hit you? Was it instantly and what? Instantly. What? Three drags. How did you feel? Three drags yeah. on this joint. And I was laid on my bunk, like, it looked like my TV had gone to the 25 foot away from me. <laughs> it looked like I was looking, it was like I was in a K-hole. It was like I'd been sniffing k I hate K-holes. They're not good. No. They're not good at all, mate, not good at all. It's very disturbing being in a K-hole. I've been some messy paces in a K-hole before. I love K-holes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sat in the house like, I've been in a K-hole. <laughs> <laughs> I used to chase the K-hole all the time, but no, it's not a nice place most of the time. I'll come, I'll come out of a K-hole before, and my mates, we was at an illegal rave, and uh, my mates had uh, gave me a line of K. I'd not long got out of jail, and they'd gave me a line of K, and it was across a map book, and it was from corner to corner on this map book. Anyway, I've hoovered it up, and, uh, well, yeah. That was about all I remembered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then I've woke up the next day at my auntie's house, not at the rave, at my auntie's house, and I'm stuck to the mattress. And I've looked at myself. I've gone like that. What the heck? Is I couldn't hear nothing. I've looked at my hands and I'm covered from head to toe in mud. Yeah? 
I've obviously contacted my mate straight away. Like, what, what was going on? Oh, yeah, we was at the free party at Rousham and you was rolling around in puddles on the mud track. We couldn't get you up. We couldn't get you up, Foster. <laughs> we couldn't get you up, mate. We just left you to it. We waited until you kind of come round and took you home to your Auntie Sylvia's. Yeah, mate, I had mud in my boxer shorts. I had mud in my ears, up my nose. I do not have a clue how it got where it got, but Played I'm sure the there'll world. be some videos floating around somewhere of it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling us earlier about that rave at the climbing wall. Oh yeah, yeah, that was Buckmore Park. That was there was a couple, there's a couple of lads, um, a couple of lads that have got a sound. Well, a crew of people that have got a sound system called One Unity, and it's uh, they're a good bunch of lads. Good bunch of lads. One of my very good friends, Housey, uh, peace be upon him. He he he's passed away now, um, uh, and uh, yeah, they they used to set up some pretty damn good parties, and. Uh, and we're at this party and it's it's in a disused, it's like in an abandoned um, leisure centre. And uh, it's called Buckmore Park. Uh, you, could, you, you, could, uh, you can have a look. There's, I think there's actually some videos of it um, floating about. Um, but yeah, there was a massive, massive climbing wall in there. And you've got the beginner's bit in a climbing wall, haven't you? You've got the beginner's bit that you can go on and uh, you can jump off of it and climb up and jump off without no ropes. And it's safe to do so because you've got so far of cushion into the ground. And then there's the intermediate bit and the professional bit that goes up hundreds and hundreds of feet. Um, but there was like a there was like a walkway that you could walk through from the other end of the party, and you could walk through like it was for people that had got to the top of the wall that didn't want to climb down. You could walk out and go to the changing rooms. And my friend, my friend there. Uh, Wombat, that's his nickname anyway, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, he's uh, he's uh, he's standing there on the intermediate bit and he's looking at all of the other lads. He's obviously smashed off his face. He's, he's on ketamine and trips or whatever he's had. Tripping his nut off he was. And, uh, and yeah, he's like looking over at the, all of the other lads on the beginner bit, climbing up and jumping off, like doing flips and jumping off and stuff. Like having a laugh, basically. And uh, he's looked at him and he's going, Ooh, and like they've shouted him, like not to jump, and he's jumped, yes. jumped straight off the intermediate bit, and he's landed like he's landed with his legs like this leg down onto the floor and this leg out flat, so this leg took all of the brunt and it shattered him from it shattered him from his ankle to his kneecap, and it shattered his leg. His leg was in a horrible position. Like uh, it, the sole of his foot was like facing sideways from his leg, and it just weren't good. Obviously, we've all rushed down there to him, and that I was oh, I had a bit of ketamine at, at the time, and I'm like feeding him ketamine and like getting getting cider down him and feeding him some more ketamine. And he's looking up at me, he's going, "You know what, mate? It's mad. I can feel my bones grinding together, but it doesn't yeah. hurt." I was like, what? Are you for real? Like, shut up, mate. Like, I don't want to be hearing that. And then we had to, like, we had to, like, beg the police and the ambulance people to come in to the rave to rescue him. Like, we couldn't have moved him because we had no experience it, it with a shattered leg. We didn't even know what to do with it. We couldn't even move it because, like, his leg was L-shaped for ages. Bring your high down, wouldn't it, that? Yeah, like, I was just... I, I was on a bad trip at this point. Like, I didn't know what was going on, really. I, I was just concerned about getting the ambulance people in. Anyway, we're having a discussion with the ambulance people and the police. Ended up making an agreement with them. Like, they took their batons off, and then they came down and helped us bust, bust, that, bust the back door open. And like we've busted the back door open and managed to get him out and that, and they ne no harm ever come to them because it never would because the the the, the illegal rape vibe is supposed to be f love and respect, isn't it? Peace, love, unity, unity. and respect. Yeah, yeah. Peace, love, unity, and respect. That's that. That's their morals, isn't it? It's all about having a good time. All about having fun. Plur. Plur, yeah, plur. plur. Remember that. Plur. Plur. You boys remember that, do you? Yeah. Plur. Yeah. Seen plur. Yeah, Peace, America. love, unity, respect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That was the candy rave as well. That was, that was uh, as we'd stopped really, wasn't it? Uh, it was that, uh, yeah. It was a bit, we were a bit darker than the blur, what people, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of what was all about going in and 
Lots of gurning. Ecstasy. Well, it started out just like dancing and enjoying it. But then, it, as you said, you know, these drugs do start out, they blow you away. Yeah. Like you said with heroin, but the side effects come in. Oh, yeah. And you yeah, start to do yeah, more exactly. to keep the high going. And you're always chasing that early high, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, of course, yeah. So we started out, yeah, ecstasy, just hugging and smiling people all night long. Yeah, I love you, man. I've been on these before, yeah. It's just old school, like it's old school people, house. You know, like nice women's voice coming through and all that. Yeah, Sunshine yeah. Sunshine on a rainy day, stuff yeah. like that. Oh, that's a cracking tune, that is. But, but then, once fucking that Smurf so. music come on, once that got into it, I started going off raves, me. All that fucking hippie. Happy fucking Happy hit. hardcore. Yeah, happy oh, hardcore. Shit. I cannot stand happy hardcore. When I was young, life was so logical. Yeah, literally. Do you think the thing about it was the bird sucking your fucking dick? You know what I mean? One with pink hair, one with blue. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it with their high vis with their high vis headbands on so you can tell the difference between the two of them. <laughs> yeah, it's literally like it got to the point where we were doing like 20 E's on the weekend each. Oh my god. And mixing in Ket, Xanax, Crystal Meth. That's what cracked so GHB. People would have said it was taboo, but I, I, I'd, I'd be smoking cracking at the, at the rave, me. It was a bit taboo at the parties, but see now it's all cracks yeah. accepted at the free party now. Like cracks you know I mean? accepted, cracks accepted. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous, mate. Excuse my language. Yeah, it is ridiculous. Crack should never be accepted in any social situation. <laughs> <laughs> it should never be accepted, should it? It should just never be accepted. It's just wrong on so many levels, isn't it? Well, it's you like... only you only best hit is your first hit. Yeah, so you exactly. might as well have one big banger. And that leave it at that for a while, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the the only way to do crack would be that would be to get yourself a big massive pipe, do it, and then don't do no more for the rest of that day. Yeah. Like there's no point in chasing that high because you never find it. No. Never did, ever find it. Did you try crack before the heroin or after? After. After and what were the circumstances of that? Uh as I said, I said earlier on, didn't I? I said I've gone to the dealer and the dealer was selling he was selling gear and he was selling crack okay yes he was speedballing do you know what I mean so I speedballed it I speedballed it and then realised that you could put it in a needle and then and then obviously as soon as I found the needle I went from this big 23 stone 12 giant geezer with dreadlocks down to a 13 stone wet through it's mad when you put the crack in the needle because you've got to Decrack it, haven't you? You got to deconstruct yeah. it, put yeah, lemon juice got, on yeah, it. Yeah, you got to put lemon juice and deconstruct it. Yeah. it. yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. You have to become a scientist, don't you? Really, yeah, you to do, become yeah. a druggie as well to cook crack. Do you know what I mean? You have to become a scientist. I used really. to use a little baby jar and baking soda, put me rocks in, and I used to heat it up and then twist it round, put it on ice a bit, just go like that, just go like that with your finger, and you'd, I rock it before me. You know what I mean? Give another little heat so it's all clear. But you got your baking soda down at the bottom and you he cracks on top. Yeah, you cracks on top and you just literally damp it like that. Get it on your finger and you get like little balls. And then just get I mean, half the time I didn't even have a crack pipe. Cause I thought I'm not carrying crack pipe. If you get caught with crack pipe, you're up bad. In trouble, you? So all I'd do is I'd get like cans of cork and I'd get a can. Tip the can of coke up. Yeah, crush it. <laughs> I'd put little holes in it like that, and I'd put a little vent there, a hole there. I'd get me ash, put me ash on, put me lump on, hold the vent like that. <laughs> Let go of the hit hole, yeah. smash yourself up like that. The worst, best, <sighs> the worst, best feeling on the planet. The worst, best feeling. That's what I used to say oh. when I used to have a snowball. That's the worst, best feeling you could ever have. It is though, isn't it? It is the you just, worst. You just want to come in your pants, don't you? Yeah, it is the worst, best feeling. Best feeling. It's fucked up, isn't it? It's just you don't want to. You literally do not want to do that. Like, it, so it, you smoke half ounce of it, though, man, and then you end up getting psychotic. You yeah, like, start seeing it on the carpet. You're looking at, <laughs> yeah, spotting. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at the curtains. <laughs> I used to sit there in hotel rooms and look underneath the door. And thought, ah, I know someone's coming because you can see the shadows. It's just like normal people walking past. But if that <laughs> shadow stops, I'm coming out with my fucking bat, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, man, when we first got to Arizona, rented this apartment out to Colombian crack dealers. Oh, nice. And they were buzzing because yeah. he would do like up to $100 rock in one breath. 
<laughs> They'd give me the rock just for free, just That's to see, the see how big I could yeah, do it. See how big you could do it. Like literally, <sighs> like that, and it's just like your fucking your heart be beating, you get into the sweat, you just feel like cheesing in your pants there and then, or having a shit, depending on what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> There's the, the, uh, this, the, the, the parties, yeah, I used to get this, this this fella called Swanky, Swanky DJ, his name was, yeah, uh, and he used to come to the parties to do DJing and that, yeah? Like, yeah. And, like, obviously then, I could sniff a gram line of ketamine, yeah? I could sniff a gram out of a bag, yeah? yeah? Uh, and then go and get on the NOS bottle and start selling balloons. Do you know what I mean? I was quite an animal for ketamine. The young kids are into them a lot, them bottles. The oh, NOS round balloons. Round ours now. Did you all just see round on the Loads streets of, little of them little tubes. fucking silver cans? Yeah, I know, yeah. it's ridiculous, isn't it? I was walking fucking through hell. Birmingham the other day, man, and all of the back streets are completely lined. Have a silver or, like, these, blue, royal yeah, blue. By these little aluminium cans. I'm thinking, are they dumb or something, yeah? Why don't you go around collecting all of those aluminium cans? They're aluminium. They're worth money. Oh, it's aluminium. It's aluminium, yeah. Oh. It's aluminium, yeah. They, so they make those bottles out of aluminium. So if you collect them, if they're not magnetic, they're aluminium. Got so you. if you collect them up and take them in a carrier bag to the to the scrapyard, it's aluminium and it's clean aluminium as well with no steel on it. So, so it's actually did, worth good money. Where did they get that stuff from? Did it from like um... not just socks, from from catering uh, catering places, or they steal the bottles out of hospitals, don't they? Ah, right. Big right. Mike and the Prophet. Their house used to be full of all that stuff. Yeah, two of our friends with that now. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I don't, I don't know who he was, but he'd go into the fucking, he'd go into the supermarket and he'd buy that, no, the squirty cream. Oh, yeah. But he'd be like, yeah, he'd keep the whippets, you know yeah, what keep, I mean? Yeah, keep the fucking, keep the, uh, keep the can upright so the yeah. cream don't come out yeah. and just take the gas off the top of it, yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, you should say that, yeah. I said to my missus the other night, I did, I said to her, I said, look, because she'd just finished off the can of, um, Whipped cream. Yeah. And I said to her, I said, look, I said, that's got nitrous oxide in it, darling. She went, no, f off, you're lying to me. I was like, no, honestly, I said, now the, now the cream's run out. I said, I said, that's what you had when you had the baby. And she's like, that. Oh. I even got the missus. And she was like, oh, red was all shaking and that. I was like, oh. I was like, yeah, see, I told you. It's good stuff. Recovering druggy, getting everyone else high. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, no. It's it's not just oxide. It's laughing gas. It was just, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? It's just a little bit of a laugh. But yeah, I, I'm glad. Do you know what? I'm so. Well, why happy. are the kids into that? I do because it gives you that head buzz. Do you know what I mean? When you take a nos balloon, yeah, yeah, it's like having a rocker crack. Oh, right. So like basically, what they do, yeah, is they'll fill the balloon up with nitrous oxide, yeah. And then they'll breathe in and out of that same balloon. Does it make so it so funny? Because the stuff we had in no, America made it so funny. No, it don't. No, it's not helium. It's not helium. It's like this. Stuff. Oh, yeah, it does. It makes your voice a little bit deeper. No, actually. this is like... Oh, the bit of cartoon, high-pitched voice, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's helium, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, what do you call it, yeah? See, the, they, fill the, they fill the NOS balloon up. Sorry, hold on. That's really so. Yeah, they fill the NOS balloon up and they breathe, they breathe out all yeah. of the way. So they've got no oxygen in their lungs. And then they just breathe in and out on the on the nitrous oxide. Ah, right. And it's ninety eight percent nitrous oxide and two percent oxygen. So it makes them lightheaded. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. basically, wow. that's all they're doing is they're fucking hyperventilating in and out of a balloon. You yeah. don't even need nitrous oxide to get that buzz. You just blow up a balloon and breathe in and out your own oxygen until there's no oxygen left in there. In fact, what they actually say if you're on ventilator, I'm on I'm on an inhaler, and if you ever run out. What you're supposed to do is get like a brown bag and yeah. do exactly that. Yeah, hyperventilate. Yeah, it does help. Believe it does it or help. Not. Yeah, it does. And yeah, I don't know why the brown well. bag helps, but it does help more than plastic bags as well. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, does, there's yeah. a thing called bellows breath, where you just go like that, <laughs> and you, you do yeah, you feel you spaced out. out high. Yeah, at the, at the end of it. Out, yeah. Did but, you not? Did you not try the video head cleaner law that they used to sell at the head shops in Phoenix? No, video no. And you just sniff it. <laughs> That was like a bit of that feeling oh. as well, yeah. Video head cleaner. I did. I must admit, yeah. I have. I did like I've gold. I've smelt that. I've smelt that Golden video seal. head cleaner before. Yeah. <laughs> Give your head a head. Yeah, I've 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 smelt that um that that video head cleaner before. My mum's VHS shelf. 
I've never, <laughs> I never thought about getting high on it though. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I got it out and it was a little tube and it proper, like, proper stunk. It's like you put it under your nose and you're like, oh, and you're like that, burning poppers, your nostrils. Poppers. The very first oh, day, poppers, I, no way. No, the very first day I got. <laughs> they are funny. The very first day I got, I must have been about nine or ten, and um, it was fucking. You you get a little tube and put it in your car. Oh, you petrol. petrol, yeah. Oh, then you, you get, get some mad trips whoa, on them. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, oh, that's whoa, what I was whoa, just about whoa, to say. Whoa, it does. It goes on, whoa, 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 and it gets faster and faster and yeah. faster, doesn't it? I've I've had some crazy trips on getting high on petrol. I thought there was loads of dead people hanging up by red tape in this woods. Me and my friend sat there with a petrol can getting high. <laughs> I was about fifteen years you old. Think, you don't realise it's a drug or you're getting high or you but it's just a you trip, just isn't it? And then you? all of a sudden you're in this mad trip and yeah. you don't know what's going on and you don't you think it's real, don't you? I shit myself and ran out of the woods that day, yeah. I did. I absolutely shit myself. I threw the petrol can at me, mate. Like he was sat next to me. I've just gone bong, threw it off the side of his head and just run off. He's come down to me house afterwards. He's like, What what's going on, mate? I was like, Yeah, yeah, I was seriously saw some crazy stuff but yeah. I don't know whether it was real or not and I ain't going up them woods again no not a chance well that poppers gives you headaches oh remember, stupid headaches I remember the very first time I got drunk as well and it was like cheap stuff it was like Chizano I think it was called Chizano Bianco and I had like three bottles of it and it made me puke and like you know what to this day I can't smell it to this day I can't go near that particular drink Ugh. Cinzano, is that not like... It's Annecy? like Martini. It's like Martini, Bianco, isn't it? Yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. So I never did a speedball. What's that feel like? Um, well, it's like... Are you putting equal quantities of coke heroin, or how are you doing it? Um, well, I'd say there's... I'd, I, I liked more crack. Crack. More, more, more coke or crack, whatever, whatever you could get your hands on. It's better to get coke to put into a speedball, to be honest, because then you didn't have to deconstruct it. Yeah, but you still like well, you have to get the shit out of it stuff. Well, I know because we we was getting like proper, proper coke, like proper flake, like, yeah. It, it, and you you put a gram of that in it, into ammonia, and you're getting like nine point nine nine back. Like we was getting proper pure stuff. So like so like you'd put the coke in Mexico, it'd bubble up, it'd double up. The, the yeah. crack would that good. You put it with your baking soda, you'd get double. Yeah, so exactly, pure. exactly. So like this, this pure, the pure coke's better because you'd you'd know if it was pure because you'd put it in and it'd just disappear. The, the water would just go clear and it'd just yeah. disappear. Do you know what I mean? So you knew whether it was good or not. And like, and if it went cloudy and then it weren't really that good. Do you know what I mean? Whatever shit was left in the bottom. Was... You pay money for that over there, or don't you pay a lot of money for the good stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think over here at the minute, I think it's like, I don't know, I don't. Obviously, I don't do it myself and don't take me known as I do. I know normal <laughs> it's shit. like £10 a point, isn't it, from well, what the kids are saying well, these I know days? Well, the, 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 the normal stuff were the, the beer heads, what I call them, the weekend warriors, they're just buying... They, Pub grub. Yeah, they buy the, the, the like the £80 grams, but that's not the good stuff. That's cut down to fuck. It, the good stuff's like fucking, it's really fucking expensive. It's like 120 it's quid, flake, 100 quid, you know yeah, I mean? the proper flake. You see, like a bit of rainbow through it. You see a bit of, like different colours. Yeah, it looks like it, it looks almost like really fibrous, doesn't it? Yeah, and then yeah. When you yeah. break it up, it looks like shards of glass in it there, does look almost, like glass, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's quite crazy. So, how did it feel in that speedball, that first one? Fucking madness! Excuse my language. It was absolute madness, mate. Absolute madness. I didn't know whether I was coming or going, whether I was dying, whether I was living, whether I was high, whether I was low. Like, I just didn't know. I was uh, just all over the shop. Like Because you've got the sweating. up and the down forces opposing. Yeah, and it's like, pulls you, it like rips you in, rips you in half, doesn't it? It's like, you don't know whether you, whether you rush in that much that you want to get up and do something or whether the coke's like there, whether the, gears there behind it and it's making you gouch so you gouch him but rush in at the same time it's like so they're just both running at each other how does that play out on your heart not very good not very good at all makes you have palpitations 
Like well, let's have, have it right. Us. None of the drugs are good for your heart, Hardy. Not really. None of the drugs are so like the doctor wouldn't recommend doing fucking anything, would he? Really? Nah. The only, thing, say the, crack, the, the only thing a doctor would recommend is he, anything that he can prescribe. Yeah, yeah. Which is a bit, bit warped, isn't it? I had a cellmate at one point called Squeegee. He'd been arrested about 155 times for petty offences. Was he a cleaner? <laughs> Squeegee. <laughs> Ouija. Ouija should marry him. His favourite, he said the trifecta, which he treated to himself to once every now and then, was crystal meth, coke, and what? heroin in one bam. What? Yeah. And he said that just made him, like, basically just have an instant erection. It jizz in his pants. And um, he, he just felt completely out of it and in this blissful state. And skinny dip ketamine now and again, that's a good high. Oh. You don't put it to your vein, you're into yeah, muscular. Into, into muscular. Yeah. I've, done, I've done ketamine intermuscular and intravenously. Yeah, intravenously is absolutely next level crazy. Like... Yeah, it only takes one little miss though and your fucking hands just fucking like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it fucks you up. Absolutely fucks you up, doesn't it? Yeah, and you, them lumps, ketamine lumps, stay there forever, they do, don't yeah, they? Yeah. I think I've still, I think I've even still got one somewhere in my wrist. Yeah, I have. It's still, it's still a little bit of a lump there where I used to go in with the K and I missed, and it's still a lump. It's still a lump inside my I've skin. I see the guy burn his fucking nose. Do you reckon he's... that's ketamine still in there, crystallised in my skin? I've got tempted a couple of times to like cut it open with a razor blade. <laughs> get the syringe out. Of <laughs> and see whether, see whether I can get it back get out or not. Get the syringe out, see if it'll come out. Yeah, see whether, there's a, see whether there's a little hit in there that I've saved for the for, for, the, for like the last three years. <laughs> Do you want me to get wild man a knife? Yeah. No, <laughs> no, wild man, stay no, away, wild man. I wouldn't do God's that sake. anyway. Say who knows this guy. <laughs> not on camera anyway. He'd love to do stuff like that. And he could portrays it on me. That's how evil this guy is. <laughs> but she's going to put his little pinky against his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I actually need a bottle of cat. Thanks. No, um, <laughs> oh, I actually seen a guy burn his nose fucking doing ketamine, the daft bastard. What he was doing, he, he had his dish out and he was cooking it and he had his razor blade and he was scraping it and he couldn't wait for it to cool down so he just had a line but it was still fucking really hot. Oh, what a donut. He the shit out of his fucking <laughs> nose. <laughs> oh, that's class. Oh, shit. We well, did used to say, though, like, when we, like, like we'd like a, like a nice warm line of cake for breakfast in the yeah. mornings when we was all on site. Do you know what I mean? Had this, like, had this, like, little caravan site type thing I did before I went to jail on that five, on that sentence for the, for the firearm. Yeah. Like, I had my own, like, little bit of land on that. And it was, it, it, well, it weren't my own. We were squatted on there. I was going to take it as my own because, you know, you only, you only got to stay somewhere on a piece of land for five years and you can claim it as your own, can't you? It was as long no as man's. It, belongs to it was no man's land it didn't yeah. belong to anybody it yeah. was just abandoned land next to a canal it was a really nice piece of land though but I was gutted that I got locked are up are you supposed to build something it. on it no I don't no you have to have I think you have to have livestock on it so they can't move you uh. and you're not allowed to put brick buildings there until it becomes your property and you get planning permission uh, so if yeah. you build a brick building they can get rid of you but oh, if you, if you put like build, a little shed up or something. Yeah, if you put a little shed that's on a pallet, they can't say and nothing. put a goat outside. <laughs> yeah, and put, and put a goat outside of it, yeah, and then they can't move you, yeah. basically. So that's what I was going to do. I was going to get a couple of, couple of sheep down there or something, or fucking goat, as you said. Um, but obviously I got locked up and that came to an end. But that was awesome down there, it was. It was like our own little thing. We had like a sound system at the end of the caravan and that. Few no one's powers. fucking with your head, you're out of the way. Like, exactly, you know I mean? exactly. We was right out of the way, next to the canal, no trouble at all. And then I went and done this stupid thing, got involved with... Go fishing if you want. I've never been into fishing, but a lot of people say it's therapeutic. I haven't got the patience for oh, it, I'll personally. tell you what, I bought myself... I moved to... I, I moved to... Uh, the uh, coast near Morecambe, yeah, and uh, I bought myself a fishing rod because, like everybody said, yeah, you can catch flatfish off of the stone jetty, yeah. And I'm watching people standing there. Well, they catch you the cold. In between these two people, this geezer's pulling in dogfish. This people, this person's pulling in fucking flatfish. I'm standing there feeding the bastards with ragworm and not catching nothing. <laughs> yeah. So I've wasted 30, 40 quid on fishing rods, yeah. <laughs> and I've probably spent about 30 quid on bait and I've not even caught nothing apart from a cold. Um, Do you know what I mean? I've never been good at fishing. Even when you were a kid and you'd, you'd get them crab lines and all you'd go and catch crabs off a bridge. Yeah, I, oh, could yeah. I couldn't even catch 
catch one of them fuckers, me, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I know what I'd get with them, yeah? I'd get halfway back up the side of the jetty with the off. crab line and the crab would nick the bait and piss off back in the water. It'd be like wanting to chase a little bastard down. Stamp on it, sir. Yeah, get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll Could, show you. Did you ever get your hands on crystal meth? That is one thing that I've never tried. Mm. Never, ever tried it. It's that Never, to get ever it, tried like, it. You have to know people from the docks to get that. Right? There's a little bit it, in London. Yeah, it's like... So I've, you never did the hot rail? Never, ever. No, never, ever. I, I've had a few of my friends tell me that it's pretty emotional stuff. Like... Well, it makes you feel superhuman at first. You've got all this energy. You go days without sleep. You don't need to eat. But you're burning that candle and you're going to have a hard come down. Yeah, I saw that. That's what I mean. I could it's a really pure it. speed. That's exactly what it is. It's a really good speed. A really pure speed. Uh, like the, it's like free base. The, the, it's like the old time. It's the old time pink champagne, but like ten times stronger. Oh mate, that sounds pretty awesome, but pretty bad also, obviously. <laughs> but no, like obviously, I know. Yeah, I never business with crystal meth. I've had trips. Dead man's DMT. And the most, the, the better, if it smells like cat piss, it's the best. The, yeah? Yeah. The nice. Most, if it smells like cat piss, it's really fucking good. There was some stuff around called methadrone at some point through my addiction. And that was pretty savage some stuff. Some point through my addiction. <laughs> no, it's that, because it, cause it, it came... says it pretty vacantly, like, I'm not sure what drugs was on at the time in between it. Like, it yeah. Popped up, but... Yeah, I didn't know which. I didn't know what I was addicted to at the time, but sometimes through my addictive state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. right, uh, yeah, there was some stuff around called methadrone, and that stunk like cat's piss. You don't reckon that could have been crystal meth? No, no. It's crystal meth is. It's, it's a really long name. It's not, it's, it's not made the same as crystal speed either, but it's. I mean, they make it different. Because people would go to America and start necking grams of it as if they thought it was English speed. Yeah. And then they'd wig out. People could blow up ah. breaking it. They actually blow up. Have you ever seen Breaking Bad? Yeah. Yeah, well, you could actually blow blow yourself up making it if you don't know what you're doing. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that was pretty... That, that was quite good. Uh, I remember a friend of mine said to me at one point, we were selling stuff in, our, in my hometown, Banbury, Oxford. and uh, And it was like... It, it was just crazy. He's like, yeah, yeah, I've been looking at, looking into it on Limefrost. He said, all you need is this, like, this glass cabinet and, and a good ventilation system. I'm like, he's like, yeah, we could do it in this garage. It's like, I've got this garage up here. He's like, yeah, yeah, we could get all the kit, we could get it all, we could do it. I was like, and then I looked into it further and I watched these people, like, with missing hands <laughs> and, like, and, like, big patches of their faces blown off and that, like... Some of the stuff they make it was amazing. It was, like, <laughs> fish purifier and it was, like... The inside of the batteries for the alkali. Is oh, crazy, that, mate. All the um, allergy medicine, is that what they get out of the history? Oh, yeah, to, yeah, get, the, yeah, to yeah. get the epinephrine. Yeah, that's it, yeah. That's so, mad. Have you got any crazy stories about when you were on DMT or LSD? Well, DMT, that was a pretty amazing experience. Um, that was at Buckmore Park also, where my friend Wombat broke his leg. Um I took, uh, I smoked it on a pipe on top of ash like you would crack. Yeah. Yeah, and um, the only thing that I can say, yeah, is I know it might sound stupid to people who haven't experienced hallucinations before, yeah, but it was like I breathed in, and as I breathed in, when I was breathing out, it was like I became the smoke. That was my trip. So it's like I'd become the smoke. Yeah. And then like I've gone all the way around this party, all the way around the hall. As vapor. As vapor. <laughs> as vapor, yeah. So I'm this vapor going all the way around the party. But then 20 minutes later, because it's an intense 20 minute trip, 20 minutes later, I've gone. You don't want anyone to open the door, though, do you? Because you blow out. I've gone zoom. <laughs> Like that, come out of it. And it was like all of the things that I'd seen whilst I was this smoke, I looked around the hall and everybody was doing exactly that. But it was like, so I don't know, I must have been obviously seeing what I was seeing, but thinking that I was smoke. I don't know, but it was the maddest 20 minute experience that I had. And then another experience, I smoked it on a can again. Uh, and on a can this time, sorry, not on a pipe. And... Um, 
I was with my friend, uh, my friend Housie, he's passed away, as God bless him. Yeah, he's a very good man, very, very good man. But he gave me this DMT at um, Sensitize Festival and uh, I, I smoked it. I'm in a caravan with him and as I've breathed it out, I've looked out the door of the caravan and I think it's like, whatever you think of, you must trip, yeah? yeah? So, like, you've got control of your own trip if you want to, yeah? And I've thought caravan and I've got to get out of this caravan and I've looked down at the step and as I've looked down at the step I've looked back up and it's like the caravans it were in block format and they was going <laughs> like like a big tunnel of caravans <laughs> and I could see straight down the tunnel of caravans but in every single caravan my mate Housie was sat in each one I'm like wow this is like this is next level man this is next level I've gone to step out of the caravan, but obviously where I'm six foot six tall, I've bashed my head. <laughs> I've bashed my head and landed like fell back and landed in the seat, and that was where I came round. I was like, that was crazy. That was crazy, like proper crazy. What's your craziest drug story ever? Uh, yeah, probably about probably about that uh, about that KO where I woke up at my auntie's house, the all covered on. all covered in mud. That was probably yeah. my craziest one. <laughs> Like, I don't know, I don't know whether, I can't think of any other. We've been in some mad situations with the illegal waves and that, like, you know, like, being that I was, I've been in the lead car enough times. I was in the lead car once with my friend, baseball bat Dave. He's passed away. He's passed away. It, that heroin killed him as well. Mm. Peace be upon him, my brother. Um, but... But like, yeah, he. I, I was. I was in the front with him, and we've got like a little mini silent generator in the boot, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and an angle grinder, and we've gone to Pete. I think it was Kingscliff, in Peterborough, and like we've gone, we've gone onto this disused like MOD ground or army base or whatever the heck it was, full of asbestos up there, yeah, yeah. like disused, couldn't use it anymore. So like we've pulled up, he's like handbraked the car and that, spun the car around so the boot's next to this big box section steel gate. He's jumped out, I've leant over the back seat, pulled the silent Jenny up, got it started and that, he's opened the boot, like he's got this, got the angle grinder out and he's like, and I looked across like at the gate that he was cutting and like it had like, seven or eight different welds along the gate like where we'd been and where people where we'd all been up there and done raves before like so off. he cut the gate he cut the gate in a fresh place again we all went in set the party up i can't remember what boys that was what the party was with that time i think it might have been odyssey or something like that or some crazy name but yeah that was a, that was a mad party crazy crazy party i lost my dog at that party for about five hours I had a little white Staffordshire Bull Terrier called Storm. And, yeah, she ran off. Oh. I didn't... <laughs> she was happy enough, though. She, oh, when I found her at the end of the night, she weren't harmed or nothing. She just no. literally... nobody, A dog wouldn't get harmed at a place like She's that. She's been you know getting what I mean? cuddles by they're just, Yeah, 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 yeah do you know what I mean? There'd be somebody gurning their nut off in one of yeah. the cars, cuddled up with a yeah. dog. Dog that looked like a fluffy, fluffy bear or whatever they were seeing. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? That lifestyle's just crazy. So we've talked about your main arrest with the weapons charge and kidnapping. These are almost 50 arrests. Any crazy stories around those? Um, yeah, well, I got arrested once, yeah. Um, I was in the town centre. Uh, I was in Banbury town centre. And um, I was walking through with my, uh, with my partner at the time. And she was pregnant with my child. And, um, and we're walking through the town... And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I've had about 10 coppers rush me. I'm carrying these shopping bags, yeah? She's like eight months pregnant, yeah? I'm carrying these shopping bags. I'm walking through the town and they've come and arrested me on suspicion of shoplifting. I'm like, oh, obviously, I haven't been doing no shoplifting. I was, I was Keiko at that time, yeah? yeah. I, was selling, I was selling shit. I had loads of money. Yeah, money was not an issue for me. I did not need to go into co-op and steal shopping like they'd said I had, yeah? <laughs> so they've twisted me up, got me in the van anyway, yeah, got me down to the police station, left my eight-month pregnant missus in town with all of the fucking bags, yeah? Left her, just left her there. Eight months pregnant with, like, 
They could have at least given a lift off. With at least, hell, at least 30 kilograms of shopping to carry. Wow. Yeah, we'd just been to Morrison's, so we had like loads of cans of food in bags yeah. and stuff. It was heavy. That was why I was carrying it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they left her there. Got me to the police station. Anyway, I've asked for my solicitor. And the solicitor's like, right, can we see the evidence? And he's like, right, come on then, let's go into interview. They've got me into interview, and they've brought this tape out, and they're showing me this fucking tape. I looked at the fella, he was a fucking black man. Yeah. He was a fucking black man. Honestly, yeah. He's gay. I've looked at it and I've gone, do I look black? And he's gone, what do you mean? I said, have you not looked at this tape before? And the copper hadn't even looked at the tape, yeah? It must have been one of his colleagues that had left it as a job for him in the yeah. morning. And he's thought, right, he's been seen in town on the cameras. Let's go have him. He hadn't even looked at the tape. He was a black man shoplifting at a bloody co-op shop, obviously. I was like, so you've just left my eight-month pregnant missus in town with all that shopping, you've brought me here to inconvenience me, take my fingerprints, stick a cotton bud in my mouth, all to tell me that this is the evidence that you've got saying that I'm that shoplifter who's blatantly black. Right, now get me out of here. I looked at my solicitor, he was like, looked at the coppers, he was like, you need to both get to that custody sergeant and get him out of here before we press charges. And, like, literally, I was out of there within 10 minutes. But, like, it's just not the point, is it? It's just not the point. But once you're tired with that brush and you make them decisions to get yourself into that lifestyle... It's inconvenient, isn't it? You just don't never... You're not never going to be... You're never going to get away from it if you're not careful. You'll get you always expect there. to be stopped, don't you? Really yeah, exactly. Know. Exactly. Hence why I've had to move away from my hometown where all of my family are. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've had to move away from there because... Well, it's not just where your family are, it's where the coppers know you too. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. At the same time as that, as you're saying, it's You like, can't have a fresh start with old coppers. You can't have a fresh start with all of the old coppers that know what you used to do and you used to be like because your door's always going to go off. You're always going to be the first one suspected. Like, recently, I got arrested on suspicion of burglary. Um, there, It was a right, right whole session of inconvenience for me arrested taken to a police station 15 miles away from where i was living yeah completely inconvenience arrested on suspicion of a burglary and then because there was no evidence to charge me obviously because i never done it they've released me now they don't bail you anymore do they they don't bail you anymore. There's no such thing as police bail anymore. I, don't, I haven't been arrested for a long, long time. No, they don't. They, they've changed it all about about two years back. They changed it all. And it's uh, now you get released under investigation. Oh. So you're I not don't... bailed to a set time to come back to the police station. You don't get a date to come back to the police station. They take your phone number. Yeah. And if they find anything else on you, they'll phone you up and tell you, look, you're coming in again. All oh, right. G so it takes away people not turning up on bail. Do you know what I mean? So they just let them I go. I think that's more convenient, actually. Yeah, it's better. It's a better system, I must yeah. admit. It's a better system because then you're not having to go down there for them to tell you it's no further action. Because more time I was getting that, you know what I mean, on the charges that weren't, that weren't, that never went anywhere, that the, was just arrests on suspicion. Like, that. that's how they, most of them, are like, ended. Like, just released... Fridays was always a shit day to get arrested because yeah, there was yeah. no fucking court, so you had, you're in the Friday, Yeah, you'd be in till Monday. <laughs> the only good thing about it, though, you'd get, like, fucking... Uh, they'd have a... If it's a, if it's a little local police station like Witness, they'd go McDonald's because they wouldn't have no catering service on a Friday. Oh, but then they'd start getting the microwave meals... No, like the souls we stay. Oh, what? Like uh, have, you ever had a, have you ever had a breakfast? Oh, they call yeah, a I breakfast. No, what are you? What you love them? <laughs> What the the what I don't know whether they're the same up this way. I, I, oh, I've the had them ones in America. In, the you ones get, in Banbury. You get like a sausage. You get like oh, no. um, a hash brown. Oh no, 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 not these ones. No, nah, these ones. I asked them for a breakfast in Banbury Police Station once. I said, "I'll have the breakfast, please." It come out. It was a slice of potato, about so thick, yeah, about so round, like a scallop. Yeah, like a scallop in gravy. Yeah, and it had. It had uh, it had um, sausages and this what what I thought might have resembled bacon at some point in its life, like nah, it definitely didn't resemble a breakfast. It had gravy on it for crying out loud. 
Who has gravy on their breakfast? No, the frozen, the frozen <laughs> meals in America were quite nice when you should go 10p. Are they good? Yeah. 10p. Yeah. They'd give you Before the, the Red Death. <laughs> you'd have, every night time, they'd give you Salisbury steak. With, right, they'd have a little compartment with your mashed potatoes, your green beans, your Salisbury steak, and then they'd have a little compartment in there with your apple crumble. You'd need two or three of them to get full, but at the time <laughs> I was a tweaker, so... One, one filled me. It was almost like an airplane meal, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, and then in the yeah. morning, they'd give you, it'd be a sausage, it'd be, uh, um, but the sausages in, in America, the round, it's called sausage pate, patties. So you'd get a sausage patty, you'd get rashes of bacon, you'd get beans, you'd get a hash brown, and you'd get grits as well. That's just, that's where we were booked. Well, that didn't last long, no. And then no. you go over to our Sheriff Arpaio's jail and it's like this red death. We've got two meals a day, just mouldy bread sandwiches for breakfast and slop in the evening. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it weren't good then? The uh, American system's hardcore. Yeah, well, that's what I did think. I did think the American system's a little bit more harder than the English system, isn't it? Yeah, they go to extremes. So how do you now... Stay strong enough to not go back to the lifestyle and stay sober. Well, what I do is I just look at what I be, what I'd become. I look at what I'd become. I'd become a liar. I'd become dishonest. I'd become dirty, not clean. I'd become yeah, just not just not a great person because I was an addict and I didn't. I just didn't care. I didn't care, but I was obviously obviously going through a lot. Struggling a lot, family deaths and stuff like that, and, and and yeah, it's just it just hits you, doesn't it? And then you do stuff to cope, and then it's just mad, and it? it's like I suppose getting a girlfriend too they help, don't but they? It helps. It helps a lot. It helps a lot to have that support there from her, knowing that she doesn't do drugs, knowing that she's not that person. So she's not from that lifestyle. So you're not sat in the house and she's getting high in your channel and not. Exactly. Some girls do that, you exactly, know. The bitches, yeah. They'll tell you to get off the drugs, but then, and then they'll, they'll carry sit on there and do it yeah. themselves, yeah. I've had a couple of missuses like that in the past. <laughs> yeah, they're not great, are they? But, but yeah, it's like I stay strong, not only for me, but for them and for my mum as well, because I saw how much I hurt my mum doing what I'd done. Is it me or is it getting really warm in here? It is yeah, yeah. warm. We're, get, we're getting near the end now. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for that, Sean. <laughs> you have to check his watch. He'll go three or four hours without telling you. He really <laughs> will. Is he, he's, is he a bit of a bully then? Oh, he's he just... <laughs> <laughs> He's got these poor guys. He books in for four hours, and they're six hours later. <laughs> He'll so just keep on asking until you say, "What time is it?" <laughs> is there anything you'd like to say to the young people watching this out in YouTube? Well, yeah. It, if you if you can, yeah, make the choice not to do crime, yeah, or drugs, because they only lead in one direction, and that direction is down. And it is a slippery slope. You might go, you might go on a level for a little while and make some money, but it doesn't go nowhere apart from downwards. Eventually, you can make some money, but that money, ill-gotten gains, you'll never keep. That's a good note to end it on. Yeah, it's that. Well, thank you, Michael, for sharing your crazy prison oh, well, thank drug you. and rave thank stories. You guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank Cheers. you guys very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother.